a global professor of practice and law at the University of Arizona, and he's currently teaching international commercial transactions, intellectual property, and international trade. He has over 20 years of experience in uh, academics as well as as a professional legal advisor. Professor Malkavi's area of expert uh, is in a wide area in a number of subjects, and he's written over 70 articles in top tier journals and has written academic books as well. Professor Malkavi also frequently consults international organizations, governments, and international firms. Um, we're, we're extremely, um, uh, it's an absolute pleasure, pleasure to welcome you here, sir. Uh, and I request you to please uh, address the audience. Uh, thank you so much for uh, the nice introduction. It is uh, my honor uh, to be with you here uh, this evening, this morning, depends on uh, your time. Uh, uh, it's uh, my honor to meet uh, high caliber scholars, uh, such as my dear uh, supervisor, uh, professor and friend, uh, Professor uh, Gans and other uh, scholars uh, in the area. Uh, uh, so I'm honored uh, once again. Uh, I'm an old fashioned guy, so uh, I'm not gonna use uh, PowerPoint presentations so bear with me if I'm a bit boring, just speaking. I'm not uh, using uh, slides uh, for this time, uh, which I missed. Um, uh, I'll be uh, talking uh, about uh, sort of historical background about some of the uh, decisions made by the WO appellate uh, body and panels with regard to environmental uh, issues or health concerns raised uh, by some other countries some years ago. And we'll see uh, some of the decisions made uh, and some of the leeway uh, provided by the appellate body uh, and WTO panels with regard, to, uh, human, uh, with regard to health concerns and environmental concerns. And then I will touch upon some of the measures taken by uh, uh, countries uh, to face uh, the uh, global COVID-19 pandemic and uh, how they may react uh, after that and how the uh, panel a few in the future might rule on these cases and what would be the best approach to address some of these issues and some of the protections measures taken uh, by countries. As we all know that um, we have Article 20 of the GATT, which provides uh, some uh, uh, leeway for countries to adopt certain measures uh, to protect uh, human health uh, or animal or human uh, life and or environmental concerns. And there were uh, so many cases decided by the uh, WTO uh, appellate body and panels that uh, uh, sort of drawn the contours and the uh, uh, parameters for these, uh, for these uh, provisions. If we look, for example, at the uh, sea uh, territories and dolphin cases, uh, the, the dispute settlement uh, uh, body created sort of allowances to uh, protect human concerns uh, and will help them valid. If you look also, for example, at the Shrimp uh, Turtle 2 uh, panel report, which uh, stated that although a country may adopt a measure uh, to protect um, the, uh, human uh, or, excuse me, uh, animal uh, issues, this must not frustrate or defeat the purpose and objective of the general agreement and the WTO agreement and its uh, legal obligations uh, under Article uh, 20. Uh, we've seen also, for example, uh, the case of uh, France uh, asbestos complaint, uh, in which Canada asserted that uh, these measures adopted by France were stringent restrictions and the ban uh, imposed on asbestos uh, placed uh, uh, on the market for, for the asbestos uh, uh, created a sort of a violation of WTO law. And the panel and the WTO appellate body decided uh, that uh, the uh, France had, had the discussion to regulate the importation and sale of them within their uh, territories. So there was sort of leeway uh, for uh, France to adopt these uh, types of measures. If you look also at the case of the EU uh, and seal products case, where the EU placed specific bans uh, on uh, seal based products uh, pro pro uh, coming f mainly from Canada and Norway and sold uh, in Europe. Uh, of course, these measures were claimed to. In, uh, to promote sustainable management of, uh, of marine, uh, but the, ultimately the appellate body found that there was no technical barrier to trade issues under the terms of the application of these uh, regimes. However, in terms of design, the appellate body found that the EU seal regime to be uh, legally flawed and that the European Union had not demonstrated that the EU seal regime uh, uh, meets the requirements uh, and the chapu of Article 
2020 of the GATT 1994, that is the least uh, restrictive uh, measure, trade restrictive measure, and that uh, it, it helps uh, advance uh, other reasons. If we look also at the case of China uh, measures related to exportation of uh, rare earths, uh, we'll see that brought uh, by the European Union, Japan, and the US, among other countries, challenge the restrictions uh, imposed in exportation of earth minerals, which is vital for production of key technology uh, in, uh, in other countries, especially in the US. And of course, the arguments uh, put forward by uh, China that these restrictions uh, fell under the uh, under Article uh, 20 of the GATT, and these uh, were enacted, these type of restrictions on these materials were uh, enacted for the purpose of protecting the environment and natural uh, resources. And the panel stressed that these environmental concerns will fall well within uh, our Article 20 exception, but these need to be uh, related to the purpose and the implementation of the uh, legislation. And that uh, the panel ultimately found that these measures were not the least restrictive and thus uh, failed uh, an essential element of the legal uh, test. Uh, and of course, so, uh, of course, the, uh, the rare uh, earth minerals panel established that exhaustible natural resources uh, merit protection uh, and conservation under um, Article 20, but uh, in the China case, it was not uh, created uh, through a bright line or an open-ended uh, definition. If we look also at the case uh, of uh, the United States, uh, certain measures related to renewable uh, energy sector, which was challenged uh, by China, that many uh, uh, entities in some states uh, uh, adopted the discriminatory uh, measures uh, where they provide sort of tax incentives and rebates for the uh, use of uh, new renewable energy uh, products uh, uh, sourced through locally uh, produced services and conduits. And the fundamental question was the ability of uh, subnational units to enact and Im implement measures as they relate to renewable en energy uh, sources. Uh, so these are some of the uh, cases, major cases, that uh, throughout the history of uh, the WTO uh, appellate body and panel uh, encountered uh, and looked at environmental concerns, health uh, concerns, uh, and sustainability issues. Uh, issues. Uh, and we've seen that uh, in some cases, uh, in some cases, uh, the complainants were successful. Uh, in other cases, uh, the countries who implemented these measures were successful in, defend in defending these measures. So it's a mixed bag between win for the claimants or win for the respondent uh, in these uh, cases. Now, uh, over uh, the past uh, two years, we, we've seen uh, a lot of proposal about reforming uh, the WU dispute settlement mechanism. It started with the sort of uh, procedural uh, aspect that we want to expect to, uh, to set limits on the time uh, of looking into these disputes and the appeal, although it's uh, it's lim time limited, but uh, in a practice, uh, the dispute can extend over a five years uh, period of time, which is a long period of time, especially when talking about developing country. Then we move to reforming the, the, uh, the dispute settlement mechanism in terms of um, more of substance in terms of transparency, providing legal assistance perhaps uh, to uh, WTO panels and appellate body uh, members. And it's high time now to look at these uh, reforming this the, the dispute settlement uh, mechanism, mechanism to accommodate uh, these interests uh, and more. Now, if I move to the other topic, we've seen also over the past uh, a year and a half, uh, uh, once uh, we heard about COVID-19 and we've seen the, the measures adopted by uh, so many countries worldwide in terms of the travel ban, in terms of providing um, uh, uh, subsidies uh, to different sectors, uh, in, in the economy uh, to help uh, sort of uh, alleviate some of the damage that happened to the uh, economy and these uh, sectors. We, we've seen also uh, some uh, export bans on the medical supplies. Uh, we've seen also the, uh, the issue uh, arisen with regard to uh, access uh, to a vaccine. And we've seen also um, uh, uh, even uh, stringent uh, screening measures for investment and uh, uh, some countries uh, uh, outright will ban any major acquisition coming uh, or acqu acquiring uh, uh, a local company coming from certain countries such as uh, China. We've seen uh, also 
countries uh, sort of adapt uh, export bans on certain products or even agricultural products, although uh, some international studies uh, did not find that these uh, export ban on or restrictions on agricultural products will have an impact, especially uh, on developing countries. So we've seen that there is a sort of a protectionist uh, trend among uh, all countries trying to um, uh, maintain age uh, in this uh, uh, healthy crisis. Now, uh, some of these measures obviously run counter to WTO rules. So the question uh, that uh, arises, uh, what would be the uh, sort of the uh, 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 look uh, of the WTO uh, through uh, their uh, the dispute, dispute settlement mechanism lenses about uh, these measures, especially uh, post-COVID-19 recovery? Uh, will this these measures will be accepted and sustained or, or not? Now, uh, there are uh, several options uh, before uh, 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 the WTO. One option would be to have a WTO waiver with regard to all these measures that were adopted uh, e either during the COVID-19 uh, crisis or um, uh, post-COVID-19 recovery, which we could last for uh, well into uh, end of next year. Uh, this is highly unlikely. Although it's possible, I mean, it's a good opportunity for the next ministerial conference to look into this uh, issue. This is one option, but it might be unlikely. Another option, uh, we maintain the status quo. Uh, some countries may bring an action uh, against uh, another country for violation of WTO rules in terms of export ban or export restriction on, on medical products or high tariffs on certain medical products or agricultural products. Uh, and we will face the same issue when the WTO appellate body and panels face these uh, environmental concerns, cases or uh, cases that have human uh, health concerns. It will be decided on a case by case basis. So we, uh, there will be no bright line sort of that provide a direction uh, into how uh, future future panels might rule on a certain uh, measure that were taken during COVID-19 crisis or after the uh, uh, COVID-19. Uh, uh, now, uh, there is a better option, which would be uh, for uh, to establish a spe specialized panel. This is uh, possible, considering that there are proposals right now to modify the WTO dispute settlement uh, mechanism. So it's perhaps it's better to uh, provide uh, uh, specialized panels that focus uh, on these issues only. So we have now, we have a sustained and a clear manner in which these cases um, uh, might be decided. So this is in general my, uh, my argument uh, in the paper. We have to uh, modify the WTO dispute settlement mechanism. Uh, we have to uh, take these considerations uh, into account when we look at the human cost for the COVID-19. Although these measures violate WTO rules, uh, WTO panel, panels may have uh, to accommodate this concern, but this, these are for the panels to rule. My main argument that it's high time uh, to have a specialized panels that focus on these uh, concerns because we, have, we want to have uh, a clear manner in which uh, these measures uh, can be accepted or not accepted. We do not want to go to the old days where one panel might rule on one certain human health case or environmental case one way, and we have another panel decide uh, other way. And by this, uh, I conclude uh, my uh, presentation and thank you.